Most countries dream about running on clean electricity, but Costa Rica has basically done it, supplying up to 98% of its electricity from renewables year after year. Whoa, I got chills and they're multiplying. Okay, but seriously, how did Costa Rica manage to pull this off? and what can we learn from it? Costa Rica is a small, mountainous, and famously green country in Central America. The name translates to rich coast, given by Christopher Columbus back in 1502. Decades ago, it made a very important strategic choice. It put one nationwide public power company, ICE for short, in charge of planning and running the grid. That meant building renewables that matched the land. Hydropower in the mountains, geothermal from the volcano belt, and wind along the coast. And yes, the company is called ICE. Oh man, not again. Hey, can you let me out please? This is totally not cool. Fun fact, ICE was founded in 1949, right after Costa Rica abolished its army. Instead of spending on tanks and jets, the country reinvested in schools, healthcare, and infrastructure, and building out clean electricity was central to that. Basically, they traded military power for renewable power. The goal for the country was simple, reliable and affordable clean electricity with almost no carbon emissions. In its best year, 2021, Costa Rica supplied 99%, basically 100% of its electricity through renewables. Okay, but what does that electricity actually power? Electricity powers the heating, the cooling, the lighting, cooking, devices, appliances, Basically everything, except for the Christmas lights on that one neighbor's house who thinks he's competing with NASA. An important note here is that electricity isn't the same as total energy used from the country. About 75% of Costa Rica's overall energy still comes from fossil fuels, mostly for transport for cars, buses, planes, things like that. So the cars aren't clean yet, but the sockets are. What does the renewable energy grid actually look like? Well, we can break it down like this. Hydropower is the biggest source, producing about 73 to 75% of the total electricity, with 18 grid scale dams, including Reventazon, the largest in Central America. Dam, 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 dam. Oh, dam. 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 That's a lot of dams. Next up, we have geothermal, which is about 13% per year. It produces electricity from the steady volcanic heat, which runs 24 seven, balancing out the dry seasons when hydro dips. You just have to be careful about the spy kids falling through the volcano every once in a while. How long have we been falling? Then there's wind closely behind geothermal at 12.5% per year. The Pacific trade winds peak in the dry season, which perfectly complement hydro. The air nomads are making a comeback. Lastly, there's solar and biomass renewable energy, but that's still growing as it's only 1% as of today. And the remaining electricity needs of the country is typically filled by backup fossil fuel plants, which the country has, which typically ranges between one to 5%, very low. Put simply, Costa Rica tuned its grid to its geography. And because ICE runs the generation, transmission, and distribution of the electricity, everything is coordinated like one big orchestra instead of a first grade music performance. From 2015 to 2022, this grid setup has delivered about 98% to 99% renewable electricity year after year, grabbing global headlines. But there are challenges, of course. Hydro heavy systems aren't always invincible. In 2023 and 24, Droughts and El Nino, which is actually a natural recurring phenomenon that affects global temperatures, dried reservoirs, and renewables dipped to 92 to 95%. Ice also had to ration power, and fossil fuel backup plants kicked in. Hydropower is amazing when it rains, but it's quite fragile when there's dry spells. That's why diversification of energy matters and something that other countries could take note of. Which leads us to our next section. What can we learn from Costa Rica? Costa Rica's clean energy renewable system works because it matched its technology to its terrain. Hydro in the mountains, geothermal near the volcanoes, and wind in the coastal corridors. The lesson here is to play to your strengths. In sun-rich regions, lean more solar. If you have windy coasts, lean wind. 
Now, although renewables are cleaner than fossil fuels, they're not always impact free. Big dams can flood valleys and hurt river ecosystems. Wind farms sometimes hit birds and solar takes up land and needs mining for rare materials. The difference here is that these impacts are typically local and manageable, unlike fossil fuels, which typically heats up the whole planet. And I'll be making a future video diving into the potential negative impacts of renewables. So stay tuned for that. And if renewables don't cover it all, carbon-free alternatives like nuclear power are an option. Just take a look at France, for example, which has an immense amount of nuclear energy generating about 70% of its country's electricity. The remaining 30% is run on wine and cheese. It's a pretty good life. Fossil fuels are a finite resource, and it's very probable that the price of oil and fossil fuels will go up significantly in the coming years and decades as we use up more of the immense oil reserves we currently have and run out of the big oil fields harvesting more. Having a solid renewables grid like the one that Costa Rica has is ensuring that they're gonna have a self-sustaining system in the years to come. We can also take a page from their system with ICE. ICE is basically like the Simon Cowell of the energy world. It brought hydro, geothermal, wind, solar, biomass, all together just like one direction. Sure, each source can sing on its own, but together, that's when the magic happens. Finally, clean electricity only works if you actually use it on most things. So electrify your transport. Costa Rica is already aiming for 70% electric buses and taxis by 2035 and 100% by 2050, plus a new electric rail along the country. That's right, one day even your Uber driver could be running on volcano energy. You might be watching this video right now from somewhere in North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, South America, hey, maybe even Antarctica, and you might be wondering, is this replicable for my country? Well, for the most part, yes, but it's not copy paste. You can copy some of the principles which look like long-term planning, renewables tailored to geography, and resilience for bad years, you just can't copy paste Costa Rica's rivers and volcanoes. Costa Rica has proven that clean grids aren't a fantasy, they actually exist. The real story isn't just about the 98% renewable, which is amazing on its own. It's that when the weather turned, the system bent, but it didn't break. Now that's a model worth copying. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Brian. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And unfortunately I do have to go because I am still multiplying so I gotta go to the hospital to get that checked out. Until next time.